A Love Triangle in Extremis, New York Times Book Review. Atmospheric and Sensual, NPR.com. Romantic, Erotic, Informative, and Extraordinary, Reader's Digest. Smart and Steamy, USA Today. Intense, Seductive, Sensual, and Intellectual Tension, San Francisco Chronicle. Did we read the same book? So I picked up Euphoria by Lily King at my library and has since returned it. That's why I don't have a physical book to show you. Euphoria was written in 2014. It was a national bestseller. It won a slew of awards and made it into numerous highly acclaimed top 10 best 10 books of 2014 lists that sort of thing. The book got around. It is set in 1933 in the jungles of New Guinea and is loosely based on the life of Margaret Mead. So we follow three anthropologists. Nell and Finn Stone are married and they continually run into Andrew Bankson as they're studying primitive tribes. Now I picked this up expecting a romance, expecting to see a love triangle done well. So love triangles get a bad rep, mostly because of YA and how badly they're handled. Generally, you get two attractive guys who are both considered catches in their own right, and a bitch protagonist who strings both along and can't seem to make up her mind. To the point where you're wondering why the hell these two guys who are supposed to be, you know, awesome are putting up with this shit. I don't have anything necessarily against love triangles. I'm tired of seeing them overdone in YA and overdone badly, but I don't have anything against them and I like seeing things done well and this looked interesting so I picked it up. But unfortunately we don't actually get anything interesting in a love triangle. We get one guy who's likable and we're clearly meant to root for and we get one guy who has no redeeming qualities whatsoever and we wonder why the hell she's with him. Finn, who is Nell's husband, does not support Nell either personally or professionally. He does not support her as a woman. He does not support her as an anthropologist. He does not respect her in any way, shape, or form. He is violent. He is emotionally abusive. He is distant. He is dismissive. And he has no redeeming qualities. We're told at some point that he was charming, but we don't see any of that. Now, in the story, Nell has published a book documenting the sexual practices of primitive tribes. This was, of course, in 1933, so it was both controversial and did earn her some critical acclaim and professional acclaim. So she is known in her work. She gets a lot of fan mail. Her name is known in in these professional circles, in the academic world. She's notable. She's successful. She's done well in her work, and Finn resents her for it. So for most of the story, Finn is obsessed with getting his hands on this flute that uh, the tribe they're studying considers sacred. All other priorities are set aside so that Finn can get his hands on this flute. The flute supposedly has some writing on it and the tribes in this area aren't supposed to have writing. So if he can get his hands on this flute and he can show it to museums, then he'll you know, he'll get a lot of acclaim, he'll get a lot of recognition, Uh, this would make him famous. And this is his number one priority, he is willing to sacrifice his marriage, he is willing to sacrifice all professional ethics, he is willing to sacrifice the safety and lives of those around him. And even though he is fully aware of the relationship that is developing between Nell and between Andrew, He still prioritizes the flute and that is put on the back burner. Now this could have been used to make Finn a deeper character and to really draw out some of his insecurities and his sense of not being in control of anything with his wife being more successful and with some personal problems they'll have that I won't get into because of spoilers. But he remains a one-dimensional character 
And because it is literary fiction and because a flute is a cylindrical object, I'm thinking there's really only one accurate interpretation of this. Is this a penis metaphor? Nell wasn't particularly likable for me. She put up with a lot. Uh, divorce was a lot harder in the 1930s. Clearly she made a mistake when she married this guy. I think she realizes she made a mistake and instead of trying to fix it, the woman has enough success and notoriety, she can make it on her own. If it's politically disastrous to divorce her husband, because it's 1933 and she is in the social eye, there were still ways around this. You don't have to live with the man. You can just go about your way and never do the paperwork. That was done plenty. Instead, she actively tolerates his abuse. She's actively trying to get pregnant with him because the baby fixes everything. I, I don't understand. She was not someone I connected with at all. Now Andrew is about the one likable character we get and in fact he's kind of perfect. Mary Sue comes to mind. With Andrew we did flirt with some interesting ideas. Uh, he started out in his work as very analytical and very scientific and he wasn't getting a lot of results in his career uh, with anthropology as he was hoping to. He was going very by the book. Um, everything was scientific. This is exactly the procedures. This is exactly the materials. This is exactly the methods. Um, all very precise uh, and it wasn't working. And it wasn't until he started, uh, it wasn't until he met Nell and he started falling in love with Nell. And it's only through his emotional awakening through falling in love with Nell that he's able to develop new procedures and a new way of looking at his job and a new way of looking at these tribes and these people um, where he's able to get the sort of results he's craving and he's wanting and where his career is, starts to take off after that. And for a minute there, I really thought we were going to start talking and start exploring the idea of an emotional versus an intellectual education. Um, so much of personal growth can't be done on an intellectual basis. It has to be an emotional journey. That's how you identify with other people. That's how you appreciate the people around you, particularly people with different ideas from you or different backgrounds from you. I would have loved to have seen the anthropology itself used in a way to show this whole emotional understanding versus intellectual understanding aspect of what the author was playing with there. But instead, most of the time, the anthropology was just the sort of exotic backdrop to the story. And it felt like a lost opportunity. So the relationship between Nell and Andrew I didn't buy it, not the way the book was portraying it. Andrew, I'd buy a crush. That's what I got out of him. He met an interesting and accomplished woman. He was intrigued by her and he developed a crush on her, which is fine. I didn't get any sort of depth past that from him. And as far as Nell is concerned, she seemed purposefully oblivious. And Nell's participation in the affair was, she clearly felt trapped in her marriage. And this guy was sympathetic and present. I didn't get any sort of emotional connection to Andrew from Nell. She was just sort of there and he appreciated her and she was lacking in any feelings of appreciation uh, from her husband for obvious reasons and she latched onto that which is legitimate it's realistic for sure but um, this was supposed to be some big epic love story and it wasn't but for all the quotes about sensuality for all the quotes about this love story for all the quotes on the stuff that I was interested in Severely underdeveloped, uh, there, this wasn't a romance, this was, I don't even know what this was. You tell me you're gonna give me an affair novel and it's gonna be epic and it's gonna be romantic and it's gonna be erotic and 
like sexy time doesn't even happen till like the last quarter of the book and just so much could have been done with this but the characters were underdeveloped there was so little chemistry between Nell and Andrew and there was absolutely no chemistry between Finn and Nell the most chemistry that happened was between Finn and Andrew and for a minute I was really thinking I was gonna get a big twist in the novel and get some gay romance happening and that didn't happen now we do get a lesbian orgy scene or at least we're told about a lesbian orgy scene you could have done something with that if you're wanting something sensual pick up any other adult romance because this was not that one thing that annoyed the heck out of me when you have multiple perspectives in a book I really need the chapter header to tell me whose perspective I'm I'm reading about otherwise I'm gonna get lost and that happened in this book we switched between Nell and Andrew I have no idea who I'm reading for the first two pages but I will say to the writer's credit the first two chapters I think first two or three chapters were from Nell's perspective and then we switched to Andrew and I wasn't aware that we switched to Andrew except two or three pages in I was thinking you know this feels more masculine than the other chapters um, I, I did pick up on that so credit to uh, to Lily King for that that's not something I see done well very often and next time just put the freaking characters names at the top of the chapter now the ending the ending sucked but like the last line of the ending had probably the most poignant emotional gut punch of the entire book that made me feel something that was very well done just like the last line but I don't think it was worth it so for my rating this was a two star the prose was good I enjoyed that but there wasn't anything else here I didn't like it sorry you can hit that dislike button now so that's all for me today have you read Euphoria by Lily King if not do you want to read it now and if so why talk to me in the comments I'd love to hear from you and uh, until then bye bye so I was kind of looking forward to seeing maybe a love triangle done well because those can be good the most chemistry that happened was between Finn and Andrew now that would have been an interesting book uh, it wasn't until he met Nell and he started falling in love with Nell which is a whole nother issue